PTE help. Lecture number one. Test seven. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. So it turns out that frogs, like I mentioned before, are incredibly diverse. So over 7,000 species. Um, and many of them are nocturnal, so they they live, you know, they only come out at night. But there are some that come out during the daytime, and many of the ones that come out in the daytime have really, really bright colors. And the blue frogs, or the poison dart frogs, is one type of blue. There are many blue frogs, actually, but one type is called the poison dart frog. And the reason they're called that is because the native people in the Amazon in South America used to capture these frogs and take little darts and roll them on the skin of the frog and they'd use that to shoot monkeys out of the trees. And it's because these frogs are incredibly toxic. They have neurotoxins on their skin. So they wear their armor basically on the outside of their skin. That's one of the things that makes frogs or amphibians different from other vertebrates is that they have special glands that produce defensive compounds, mostly toxins that um, if something tries to bite them, they get the toxin in their mouth, and then what happens to that predator is that their muscles stop working. So they literally, they can't bite, and they stop breathing. So some of them are really, really dangerous, actually. And most of the ones that are dangerous are out in the daytime. So they're flaunting their colors. They have very bright either reds or blues or oranges, and they're basically showing off their their poisonousness, in a sense. Is that a word? <laughs> PT help. Test 7. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Frogs are incredibly diverse, and there are over 7,000 species of frogs in the world, and many of them are nocturnal. But, the little blue dart frogs are extremely poisonous. In other words, they wear their armor out of their skin, which contains neurotoxins. If some predator bites them, the poison on the frogs poison their mouth, and they become helpless. They can't even bite, and their muscles stop working, eventually leading to death. These frogs are different from other vertebrates, and amphibians. These were also used by Amazonian, to shoot monkeys, with the help of arrows. These may be in different bright colors too. PTE Help Lecture Number 2 Test 7 Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Let me add to the complexity of the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, at the same time that we're solving for climate change, we're going to be building cities for three billion people. That's a doubling of the urban environment. If we don't get that right, I'm not sure all the climate solutions in the world will save mankind. Because so much depends on how we shape our cities, not just environmental impacts, but our social well-being, our economic vitality, our sense of community and connectedness. Fundamentally, the way we shape cities is a manifestation of the kind of humanity we bring to bear. And so getting it right is, I think, the order of the day. And to a certain degree, getting it right can help us solve climate change, because in the end, it's our behavior that seems to be driving the problem. Uh, the problem isn't free-floating, and it isn't just ExxonMobil and oil companies. It's us, how we live. How we live. There's a villain in this story. It's called sprawl, and I'll be upfront about that. But it's not just the kind of sprawl you think of, or many people think of, as low-density development, 
out at the periphery of the metropolitan area. Actually, I think that sprawl can happen anywhere at any density. The key attribute is that it isolates people. It segregates people into economic enclaves and land use enclaves. It separates them from nature.、Uh, it doesn't allow the cross fertilization, the interaction that make cities great places and that make society thrive. And so, the antidote to sprawl is really what we all. Need to be thinking about, especially when we're taking on this massive construction project. PT help. Test seven. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Complexity of solving climate change gets aggravated as we shape our cities, or in other words, doubling of urbanization. All of the climatic solutions can't be so effective unless we consider about our connectedness, social and economic vitality. Moreover, it depends on us how we live. Apart from this, sprawl works as a villain, which isolates the people and their interaction, and separates them from nature. It can happen anywhere and at any density. Therefore, we should be thinking about ending this sprawl. PTE help. Lecture number three. Test seven. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. The future of our cities, if we do it right, is going to be super cool. I mean, we're talking about growing biological material as the literal foundation of a whole city. We're going to get there, though. Hang on, just bear with me. We can we can live in a variety of different places. So when you think of deserts, you probably think like brown and dead. It's not great, but we could actually transform the Sahara into a pretty lush desert. NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies laid out a plan to pump desalinated seawater from the coast into the Sahara, and it could use these pipes to irrigate fields of eucalyptus trees. As the trees took root, they would replenish the soil and cause more rainfall, which would then cause even more growth. Because eucalyptus, it survives well in heat, and then it could be watered using those pipes. But over time, as they took root, It would lower the Sahara's temperature by eight degrees Celsius, bring clouds in because of increased humidity to reflect the sun's rays back into space, cooling it down a little more, and the trees could capture eight billion tons of carbon per year, which would be amazing. Of course, there's a few problems with this. The main problem being that it costs like two trillion dollars. It's kind of a lot. We can even live underwater. It's expensive. But it is also possible. The technology exists to create underwater colonies now for like a hundred people at a time. They use plans from like bunker-like habitats. But there are problems. You know, you have different diseases when you live in closed environments like that. Not to mention, you aren't going to see as much of the sun, so you're going to have problems with paleness and vitamin D production issues. A lot of aquanauts have reported their sense of taste diminishes. But these are things that we can overcome if it came to living. Underwater. PT help. Test seven. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. The future of our city could be a lot more possible due to the foundations of biological researches. For example, we can survive in Sahara or even underwater. Sahara's environment could be made sustainable or livable if the desalinated seawater is pumped into Sahara, which would replenish the soil. Lower the temperature of Sahara over time, leading to rainfall and humidity. On the other hand, underwater life can be made possible using bunkers. However, 
both have some loopholes, such as, it needs trillions of dollars to continue such projects, as well as, the later one may cause health issues like deficiency of vitamin D, and paleness. PT help. Test 7. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. The future of our city could be a lot more possible, due to the foundations of biological researches. For example, we can survive in Sahara, or even underwater. Sahara's environment could be made sustainable or livable, if the desalinated seawater, is pumped into Sahara, which would replenish the soil. Lower the temperature of Sahara over time, leading to rainfall and humidity. On the other hand, underwater life can be made possible, using bunkers. However, both have some loopholes, such as, it needs trillions of dollars to continue such projects, as well as, the later one may cause health issues like deficiency of vitamin D, and paleness. <laughs> 